is taught. So let's take a look then at building this cube. The first thing we need to do is determine um, the size of the cube that we'd like. I have a composition here that I've just created by going to composition new comp, and I'm going to rename this with the enter key uh, main. This is going to be the composition in which our cube will sit. We now need a composition for each side of the cube that we're going to create. That's quite simple to do. We can just hit new composition, and I'm going to choose a comp that is a thousand pixels square. So we'll unlock the aspect ratio and we'll just make it a thousand pixels wide. Background color we'll leave alone for now. And I'm just going to call this A. When we hit OK, we're going to have a new square composition. Now, this is going to act as a flat plane as one side of the cube. So you can put whatever you want into here. For now, I'm just going to put a new solid. I'm going to choose a nice bright color and hit OK. This is going to create a really easy cube different side that we can see. I now need six of these for the six different sides of the cube, or if you do want them to be the same color, then they'd obviously, you could use the same composition over and over again. What I'm going to do is rename these B, C, D, E, and F. One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's open up all of those. Excuse me, there we go. Uh, and I'm just going to go through here and I'm going to add a fill to these um, to change their color so that I can have a really simple cube. Let's make that one a slightly darker red. And let's copy and paste this fill into our other layers with different colors. I'm not sure why this strange color interface is coming up, but never mind. It doesn't actually affect what we're doing here today. So I'm just going to pick some arbitrary colors for here, just so you guys can see the different sides of the cube really, really easily. So let's do something like that. If we go back to our main composition now, and we can drag in all the layers of our cube. Now, the first and most important thing to do is to make sure that these layers are 3D. To do that, you just make sure you can see the 3D option here. And if you can't, then try toggling the switches and modes button like so, and just drag through all of those until you get the um, 3D controls on each layer. Let's downscale them a little bit because they're a touch large, I think, like so. Um, maybe 40% exactly. That sounds good to me. So let's spread these out so we can see what we're working with here. And you can see that we've got six sides to our cube. The most important option, in fact, the kind of only important option for this, aside from making your cube 3D, is to turn on snapping. Now, with nothing selected inside your composition, you should have a snapping option in the top left of your version of After Effects. I think this might only be CS6 or later. I'm not sure, though. Just make sure that turns on. What this does is it means if you select a composition, you can see that when you hover, there is a small highlight around um, the edges of a composition now that is slightly thicker than the rest of the edges. If you select something, a corner of a composition from there and start to drag this around to other compositions, you'll notice that it does then snap. Now this is respected in 3D space. Okay. So if I say that this red here um, is going to be the front of our cube, or let's say this yellow is going to be the front of our cube. Okay. I'm going to leave that as it is, and I'm going to grab the next side and I'm going to bring up its rotation properties. Now you can use orientation or you can use X, Y, Z. It's up to you, but I'm just going to rotate this however I want. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do is rotate it 90 degrees. Now it's a little bit difficult to see the edge of this cube here. So what we're going to do is split our view. So if we go to two view horizontal, like so we can make the left hand screen we can go instead of top view, we can go to custom view one, and this should be an isometric view for you or roughly isometric. We can then have our active camera on the right hand side or either side, wherever you prefer, it's up to you. Okay. So what we can do now using this yellow as our front of our cube, if we select this red composition near its corner, we can drag and snap to the edge of that cube like so. Let's then take this blue or whatever the C is here, make its rotation 90 degrees. Again, click near the edge of the corner 
and drag that to the other side of the cube and continue to do the same with the others. This one doesn't need to rotate at all, D, so we'll make D the back of the cube, like so. And with E, we'll make that the top, so we'll have to rotate that on a different axis. I think it will be the X axis, yep. So let's rotate that like so. Again, click the corner of the composition, drag it into position, and you should see that it clicks and connects pretty easily. Let's do the same with the bottom one. Go to the rotation, rotate that 90 degrees, and click and drag until it snaps into position. Now, controlling this cube um, as separate elements will be quite difficult. So you can see that we'd have to, each time we want to change something, we'd have to select all of them and reposition them in the scene, like so. Um, could be slightly difficult for you. What I'm going to do is drop back to one view, which is the front view, and I'm going to use the shortcut Control shift alt y and that will create a new null object for us i'm going to select everything but the null object or indeed only the null object and i'm going to position it until i can see it's roughly in the middle of the square in this view okay we're going to need to make sure that um, this layer is 3d and then if you need to go back to your double view here and you're going to have to use one of these options here to push this into the center of the square. Now, this is obviously only if you want your rotation point to be in the center of the square. In order to check that it is actually in the center of the square's volume, the cube's volume, what you can do is create a new camera. Hit OK. Now we can use the camera orbiting tool on our active camera, which is just a C, the shortcut, and you can rotate through them like so we can start dragging this around and we can see that our null object, if we were to select it, is definitely in the center of our cube, which is perfect, okay? If you've messed up your camera and you wanna make sure that you're gonna get back to the original, you can just twirl it down and hit reset like so. Take all of your cube layers and pick whip them to your null object. Now, when you rotate or move the null object like so, you can see that all of the sides of the cube follow it. So if we were to go to rotation and we were to just put a slow spin on this cube, or in fact, we could go a bit crazy and start whacking out some random numbers here, like so, you can see that you can rotate your cube really easily in 3D space. Alternatively, you can use this to explode the cube. So say, for example, you were to add some individual positioning elements on the sides of the cube, rather than the null object itself, you could indeed explode the cube. So you'll push this one out. You could select this layer here and you could push this one away. You could push this one further away like so, or indeed outwards. You could push this one up. You could push this layer deeper and you could push this layer further away as well. And then you can see how you can rotate and explode a cube to your heart's content. Obviously, this is just a quick demonstration. Um, if, if you look at the example I put at the beginning of the video, you can obviously create your own scenes like that using this technique. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I do hope you appreciated this tutorial and you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, etc. All of that stuff that I'm forced to tell you because YouTube algorithms really don't want you to see any of my videos unless you do so. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.